Hey friend, Shane from HighRunch.com. And today I'm gonna to talk about some workflow improvements that I'm doing here and just some useful tools that you may have or may not have thought to use in this way. So I know that I'm coming up with creative ways all the time. Hey friend, smash that subscribe button. It really helps us out. Also, we have hundreds of videos and playlists on here for you. And then we started out in uh, timestamps. So a lot of the videos you can jump around and get right to the information you want. And then we even start adding captions so you can pick your language. Enjoy the video. But just to kind of break it down, I'm getting ready to start to learn how to use this OBD programmable tool here, OBD Prog, I'm calling it. And uh, we got this uh, sent to us to uh, play with and test on Ducati. So super stoked. I want to be able to reset service lights. This thing has active controls, bi-directional controls. So, I mean, as a, a real state-of-the-art device, we're hoping it'll do everything that we, we want it to do. Obviously, the standard stuff like reading race codes as well. Super, super excited. I just recently upgraded and did a similar thing on my Dodge truck with some software that I ended up being able to dump on a little tablet here. Really made the process a lot easier with the active controls to be able to turn on motors and switches and so on. So the one thing we know about any of these devices is that if that battery's dead, we're screwed, right? Like we're not either making money or we're not getting done what we want to do. Over a year or so ago, got this device. I did some reviews on it, loved it, but my focus on this was for camping. It was like, oh, this is great. I could charge all my GoPro cameras or take it to a track day and charge a bunch of the cameras all simultaneously. Typically I had like three different camera mounts on the bike. So for me, this was kind of wild that the battery would last forever. I mean, forever and ever and ever and ever and days on end and I could charge those devices. So it was great to get through a whole weekend, come home, just charge this big bank, call it a day. It was also pretty handy for camping because of lights and things like that. And then it even had an AC outlet. There's two of them. So what's great about that is that I'm able to even charge a laptop. I mean, it was super cool. With that being said, speakers, every time I look around, I see something. What I hadn't thought about with this tool is using it in the shop, like using it as a power supply. Like anytime I had a laptop that was going dead or anything, then I'm grabbing an extension cord and running cords on the ground and being a pain there. It was quite common I had one there laying on the ground and running over. And it's just super inconvenient. I hate cords and stuff laying on the ground. Just absolutely hate it. So what I just recently got thinking about, because I was going to use the uh, PropTech laser alignment tool. If you haven't seen our video on this, it's super cool. Check it out. I'll put some links. That tool requires a DC power supply to run it. And I started thinking, wait, you know, I got some other tools that require that. So why in the world don't I just take this power bank, set it on the bench and be able to run everything with the cords on the bench and then not be dragging them across the shop. I got super, super excited about this new capability and that really added some value to me on this. Just awesome, right? So as always, we'll have links below. But then as I started thinking about you know, the other things I'm trying to do here, you can kind of see, if you see my videos in the past, I've always had humongous workspaces. It just wasn't making as much sense since I don't really do much customer facing stuff unless people send me motors and carbs and stuff like that. I have to stay relevant and fresh and, and have fun. I enjoy it too, right? And the money doesn't hurt. But the main use of this space is for the YouTube studio, create content, and then finish a lot of my own bike projects. Right? Well, with that, now that everything is housed in one space, you know, thanks to Kevin at Side by Side Extreme for sharing space with me. I've had plenty of videos of his as well. Check them out. But now that everything's here, got the little machine shop fab area up there. And this is uh, to the point where I need to organize this stuff. I still have a lot of tools up there that need to come out and find a home. You know, they might not be stuff I use all the time, but I either want to have them in clear totes or, you know, labels on there so that I know exactly where they are really quick and easy. I've made a little bit of progress until the other day when I had to shove some stuff in here, but the whole cylinder head reconditioning station with all the new way equipment is uh, set up. Got my granite block. I started making labels on all the uh, drawers there. So it, it's making progress, but long ways to go. If you hadn't seen before in my old shop, I had an entire station focused on electrical. So you can see here, I got some work to do. I got to get this stuff put away. This is something where I just keep pretty much all the battery related stuff. And this cart's nice because I can wheel it around and then obviously throw some stuff on top of it. I can slide it 
back and forth to work between these small spaces. Something I'm really learning about is how to work in a small space. So once again, this is gonna be electrical. This is the carb fuel station that just for camera purposes, I've been moving over to here because my tripod can come off there nice and easy. But like, if I didn't care about having a camera on, this by far became one of my favorite little workstations is to be able to set this up here and uh, just knock out carbs, have everything I could possibly ever want right there. Even got a little IV stand ready and attached here for a fuel supply, magnifying glass so I can actually see what I'm doing. Super cool. <laughs> I even see a future idea. Here's that other tank that I want to make. There's the one I roll around the shop, right? It's just an old IV stand on rollers. But I want to take this one here and mount it on that stand and then have it somewhere like this where it's a quick release. So I could just take it to fill it, but then it'd be pretty cool to be able to gravity feed right to the carburetors right here when I do the testing. Cool stuff. Big dreaming, right? What I need to do, though, is I need to fix this nightmare. So I bought this toolbox because of the small space. And at first there were some other employees and stuff in here. And I wanted a way to just be able to lock my stuff up at night and, you know, just have it secure and not worry about it, right? Because it's a shared space. Well, the reality is, is that is a huge amount of real estate to literally just be a dump box. It just doesn't make sense to just, you know, be closing this up and have it be a garbage again, right? So I got to get in here and I got to organize this. The stuff that, you know, just uh, the place I put my keys so I don't forget anything at night, you know, that needs to be maybe in a, a box up here so it's not taking up the ground. I need like a little shelf here. And then that got me thinking, well, dang, you know, the other thing, I need to mount my light, you know, I get it back here. I'm going to have a lot better visibility. I tried gluing it and the that didn't work, hot gluing it because the, the, the door bends so much, it ended up just popping it off. This is just kind of like tin, right? When I bought this, I was really excited because I was like, oh yeah, I could stand here. It's a great height. I'm going to be able to, you know, read manuals, you know, type work orders, make notes, you know, all that. I'm left-handed, of course, so the notepad's got to go that side. And then the, the box itself was great for just storing diagnostic tools and big cases. Got the side cabinet here. Great for all those big rectangular box tools, right? Love it. So I'm really happy with all that. I'm just not happy with this waste of space here. So what I'm going to do is put a shelf in here for that, you know, that, well, they call it a generator, but the, this portable battery, right? This portable charger. I'm going to put a shelf in there, you know, so I could grab it easy and go. And then between the couple of outlets that I have, when I, once again, when I got this, and I saw these plugins, I was like, this is awesome. This is going to be great. I don't want really anything in here if I'm using this as a workspace. So to charge a laptop and then, like I said, my iPad so I can run some music or something, that's pretty cool. But the idea of, you know, 10 outlets in here just doesn't make any sense because I don't want this to be like, I don't want anything here. So I need a couple shelves for a couple reasons. I want to put that charger on here and then I'd like to put another shelf to put like the DeWalt batteries on there and put their little chargers. And then I'm going to basically turn, I think, this whole corner into a, like a proper charging station so I could just grab the stuff and go. I think I still have the toolbox locked up where all, all my DeWalt stuff right now is just sitting, you know, over there. You know, more I think about it, I could... You know what? It's just another great use of this tool. I just, I'm thinking as I'm going here, because this battery lasts so long, I could leave all my DeWalt stuff over there and I could be charging. I could just grab, you know, that as the power bank and then throw it over there and charge the DeWalt stuff in that top box when I need to do that. That would give me a little more room in here. It's pretty cool ideas. I'm going to do something and get all my cords and stuff hung up. I was trying to organize this little nightmare and I just haven't spent the time on it, but it needs to happen. It's an absolute waste of space. So if you've got anything like this, I'd love to hear your ideas, see what you've come up with. You know, maybe you got some cool, you know, storage solutions or shelving solutions. Or I'd love to hear, share a link to a video or anything else. That would be cool. I wanted to make sure that you knew 
about this product. Like I said, we're over a year into it and love it. Can't tell you the hours that that thing has saved the day and charged us up. Even in the, the point where, like when I buy these flashlights, I, I always buy two of them, right? I got one that I'm using. And then when the battery dies on this thing, fully charged up now. I actually, just last night, this one was dead. So I grabbed that one waiting on the charger and swapped them out and that's what I do. Same thing with headlamps, like I don't have just one. I'm gonna have two so that if one dies, I'm never without what I need to go to work, right? Super, super important, can't stress that enough. Yeah, I just, I wanted to make sure that you saw how cool something like this is. So, you know, I'll put a link below. Hopefully these are still available. Like I said, it's been probably a year since I've went and looked at the link. If, if you didn't see the original video, I mean, it obviously comes with the wall charger, but it has a couple other accessories so you could charge it. You can actually charge this off your vehicle driving down the road. That's what we do camping. This thing's killer. Coming home, coming down the mountain from the weekend, and we'll just plug this in and let that thing charge it or feet so that's super cool and then it even has an outlet accessory because maybe you've got something that's that old school round uh pin style charger so there's dc in and out on this side and it just comes ready to go super super cool all right my friends appreciate having you here as always like share subscribe consider joining the channel as a way to support us best couple bucks a month you'll spend it's a beautiful day here in arizona so as always, make it a great day and keep wrenching.